Hi, Kiki. Okay. Well, tell us about when Uncle Dillard was kidnapped by Bonnie and Clyde. Well, it was in uh, the spring of 1933, and we were living in Western Louisiana. At that time, I was visiting my mother who lived in the Quincy, Louisiana. And uh, I had a telephone call, and it said, Now, Titi, don't get excited. But during the noon hour, Dillard, my husband, was out with some woman, and uh, he was knocking. She was knocked in the head, he was knocked in the head and thrown in the back seat of the car and they kidnapped Miss Faye. Well, that was all the news I had till I started home. And then I, after I started home to see what all, all this was about, I found that Gillard had gone to lunch and was in a hurry. So he ran to the house, he went to the house in a brand new car and just left the keys in it. He said, Miss Faye, say hey. And, uh, as he went out to get in the car to come back to the shop, someone was driving off and then he hollered, wait, wait, uh, I'm in a hurry, I've got to get back to work. Well, the car sped off, and he ran across the corner of the yard, he did jump on the running board, but could not hold on. So Miss Stone, who boarded at the same place, was sitting on the porch and said, or he said, they have never decided who said what, let's catch him. So they jumped in her car and started acting. Well, they got to start as Dubai. Well, at Dubai, they had set up a, uh, what do I call it now? And they blocked the road. Roadblock. Roadblock, but it was right on the top of the hill. So when they got there, and they, Bonnie and Clyde were not in our car, it was who they called the boy. He turned to the left, of course, you could see it from a mile going up there. So Dillard and Mr. Turnley. Well, they could see that the car was out running. So they had just turned around and started back home. And as they were on their way back home, the next uh, car that they thought was the sheriff, or someone from Wilson had been fetched the car. And as they held out their hand, the one was driving the car, Dillard got out of the car that he was driving and walked over to them. And he realized immediately that he was in the trap. Because in the back seat of the car, he could see that the ammunition they had would have blown up a little sick. But they said to him, uh, did you see a car go over the hill? He said, no, I didn't. He says, you're lying, you did. And he says, well, it's my car. So with that, they pulled out the pistol and hit him over the head. And he fell back on the car that he had been driving. And finally got out and caught this up. Was on and uh, knocked her in the head. But it didn't face her because she had long hair. So then they put Dillard in the front seat of the car and made Miss Stone sit in his lap all the way. Well, the first thing they did then when they got to Bernice, they stopped and got gas, but not in the car. They put it in a five gallon can in the back of the car. And they warned Dillard and them that if you see anyone, you do not speak because if you do, it'll be a young woman. Well, they kept their heads bowed and did not let, try not to let anyone recognize them because they knew that they would just blow everything up and they had the ammunition to do it. So they started on off and uh, after that, and uh, Buck was with them. That client had a brother that was traveling with him, and his girlfriend's name was Branch. But Buck was mean, very mean, and all he could think of was killing him. And he busted uh, Clyde all the way. Time to a tree and blow their brains out. Just time to a tree and blow their brains out. We do not need them. Was your husband conscious at that time? Was what? Was he conscious? Or did he hear oh, that? Uh huh. Uh -huh. It just knocked him out for a little while, mm -hmm. but he was conscious. But anyway, they they traveled on, and his girlfriend Blanche was just as mean. And Dylan said she used language that he had never heard. Well, it was pretty bad, I'm sure. And uh, Blanche reached over to Miss Stone and put her cigarette right to his arm, her arm, and it blistered it, of course, and then he says, oh, excuse me, please. But that is the kind of people they were. Well, after they got to Arkansas, everyone was a little more civil. And uh, finally, Bonnie said to Bill, it said, uh, well, Dorothy, I hear you're an undertaker. And Dorothy said, yes, I am an undertaker. And he said, well, when I get buffed off, I hope you'll take care of me. Well, as the years go by, they were 
But how did he get away from them? Well, they kept they kept on going, and uh, Bill said to him, said, you know, if you would drive way down one of these country lanes and let us out, we could be you could be uh, out of sight. You could be gone, and they'd never find you by the time we got to town. So they went to Magnolia, Arkansas, down a little country lane, and there was someone fixing a flat in a truck on that little country road. Well, Clyde bumped up against the truck and knocked it off the jack and went on down the road and turned around. And when he did, he he backed off into a little ditch and he made Dylan and Miss Stone get out of the car and help push him out of the little ditch. Well, then they started off again and uh, they stopped the car and here came back Buck walking towards them with his hands in his pocket. Bill had said he'll never be dead in his life than he was at that minute because he knew that he was coming back to kill him because that's all he had wanted all day. He took five dollars out of his pocket and threw it to his feet and he said, Dorothy, I hear you, heard you say you were broke. He said, here's five dollars. And said, go give it to that man and have him fix his flat. He said, I'm sure he'll pay you now. Well, that's the way that happened. And the man did charge him the five dollars to take him to town. Well, there they notified the police, of course, and uh, they had pictures of Bonnie and Clyde and all of them out there to show them. Mm. And uh, they called my son-in-law, my brother-in-law, and Hodge Jonesboro, and they started off after me. It has been a family joke that they picked up a little pistol and started off looking for Bonnie and Clyde, not knowing mm. who they were looking for. But with all that ammunition and those men looking for them with a little pistol, it uh, just really sounds ironic. But your husband turned out to be the one that took care of them after they got, after they were murdered, after they were killed. And after that, how did that happen? Uh, well, let me tell you about these uh, desperados. They went on up to Alma, Arkansas. That's where they were, and there was a policeman standing for them. Thing. And they took, they uh, just went out the window, bang bang, just shot him dead, just for no reason. You know, just killed him on the way. And then they went off up into the Ozark Mountains to hide for a while. And they went to uh, one of the country homes and they killed that old woman that was living there. They just beat her to death with a chain. The chain, as far as I know, for no reason. Well, about a year has passed and I was visiting my mother with them. Uh, and they robbed the bank in Iowa somewhere. And they captured uh, Blanche and his uh, Buck and the rest of them were escaping the posse out after them. And Buck was shot and he was dying, but they were in a little tall rice patch. And uh, the posse was getting on very, very close where Bonnie and Clyde had to run for their lives, which they did, and they escaped. But they, uh, Clyde, I mean, Buck did die there. And that's all about all that turned out on farm. Oh, several months, and then they were seen around in Arcadia and uh, Ruston a little bit, especially Arcadia and Gibson. Well, they were traveling then with a boy whose family name was Mathis, and he was a Houston boy. So they were hiding out out in the country from uh, Gibson, and Mathis tipped off the law enforcement agents as to where they were and about what time they would be leaving because they were staying with some of these relatives. Well, when they found out what time they would be leaving, this is when they hit uh, in the ditches and all and ambushed. And this is where so much criticism come in. Oh, they just shot them dead, you know, shot them dead. No reason they had, you know, just shot them dead. But there was a lot of reason. But uh, when they were killed, uh, the uh, I don't know the funeral mom or his and mom. I know them. None of those were in town. They were out of meeting. So they asked Dylan to come out and identify them. And uh, after he was there, well, they wanted to know if he wouldn't go ahead and embalm them and dress them and uh, prepare their bodies for shipment to Houston, Texas. And that's where they were done. That's where they were buried. But that is the reason that he embalmed. Did you see that movie, Bonnie and Clyde? I never was. You never saw it? I don't want to see it. You didn't want to see it? No. no but your husband just knew he was a goner when he saw this guy walking towards him. Because he wasn't. No, I don't want to see it. And 
uh, Bill had never mentioned it. He would not talk about it. He didn't it. talk about it. My story comes from a line or two at the time, but uh, there have been a lot of reporters that have called him, and especially at that time, he had a lot of phone calls. He would not even have to look at him. He said, I asked him one day, and I said, Bill, people are interested. It isn't all curiosity. I said, this is something big that is happening. And I said, they're really interested. They're interested in you. And he said, think of the worst thing that could possibly happen to you. Then you can talk about it. And I thought, because there was no reason to keep on. And if it was not his choice to talk about it, I didn't think it would be necessary.